Good morning, everyone. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Ranking the Albums. Today, we're going to tackle a band that has been asked for by a lot of you, a very classic band. Call them Prague, call them classic rock, whatever you like. We're talking about Procol Harum, okay? one of the uh, most classiest bands ever to come out of the UK. So they've got a dozen studio albums. We're not going to, there's a 13th album actually that uh, they recorded in recent years. It's basically just reimagining, reimaginings of old uh, classic songs with various lineups and things like that. We're not going to include that particular one. We're going to do the other 12 studio albums here. So, and I'm going to kick it off with my number 12, my least favorite, go all the way to my favorite. Um, I don't dislike any of these albums. I think uh, there's a lot of good to be found on all the Procol Harum releases. Obviously, some are a lot better than others. That's just the way it goes, right? So, uh, number 12, and I know I have it, can't find it. Maybe I had it and sold it at some point. I don't know. But 1991's The Prodigal Stranger is going to come in at number 12 for me. This was kind of like their big reunion album <clears throat> in the early 90s. Uh, got a uh, decent amount of attention. Sold pretty well for them. This was uh, basically a, you know, kind of like a, uh, you know, reunion. A lot of the classic members. So you had Gary Brooker, of course, on piano and vocals. Matthew Fisher came back on organ. You had Robin Trower on guitar, along with uh, Mark Brzezicki on drums, Dave Bronze on bass guitar, and Keith uh, Reed helping out with the lyrics, as well as a few other guys, you know, helping out in the studio. Um, personally, I found the prodigal stranger a little on the flat side it's okay it's got some decent enough tunes um you know uh the hand that rocks the cradle is a pretty good track king of hearts uh, the truth won't fade away i find it a little on the mellow side which you know a lot of the procol harem albums tend to be a little more uh kind of laid back and subdued and that's part of the charm of the band i think but uh for some reason i guess for a big reunion album for me the Prodigal Stranger, a little flat, you know, again, the 90s, so you had the more updated production values and things like that that maybe didn't suit the band so well. So I think uh, while it's a, it's an okay release, um, definitely not one of my favorites. But, like I said, it's got some good stuff on it, so I can't really knock it much. Uh, next up, number 11, we're going to go with Novum from 2017. Again, another pleasant album. Uh, not a bad one by any means. This is the last thing we, we'd hear from the band. Okay. A couple years ago, it was their first album in, God, like, what, 13, 14 years. Uh, here you got, uh, you know, Gary Brooker's back, along with, uh, on uh, organ and vocals, Josh Phillips. You got Jeff Whitehorn on guitar, who's been in the band now for quite a while. Matt Pegg, of course, got the Jethro Tull connection there on bass guitar. Jeff Dunn on drums. Uh, Pete Brown's actually helping out with uh, some lyrics. They're always using outside lyricists to assist them at times, right? <clears throat> like I said, a good kind of artful classic rock album last chance motel pretty cool song all right image of the beast get soldier sunday morning businessman i told on you all right very cool very cool cover artwork i always thought it's like when i got this i was like oh look at that this is gonna be probably a proggy delight and yeah not quite but it's it's still it's still pretty solid all right, next up, we're going to go to 2003's The Wells on Fire. Again, another album after a long break. So that, that kind of like a reimagining uh, album where they kind of redo some old classics. That was The Long Goodbye from 1995. So this is the first thing they had done, you know, in all those years, right? So we're looking at eight years. And then the, <clears throat> the first one in 12 after The Prodigal Stranger of all new material. Uh, this is pretty good. This is a pretty good album. Uh, I think, you know, you got An Old English Dream, which is a fun song. You have uh, The World is Rich, Wall Street Blues, The Emperor's New Clothes, uh, Shadow Boxed. You know, this one probably suffers a little bit from too many tracks. Got 13 songs on here. It's a little, album's a little long in the tooth, but it's uh, very well produced. You're probably asking, well, Pete, who's on board with the lineup for this particular album? So, again, you got Gary Brooker on piano and vocals, who's Always at the helm, right? Can't have Procol Harum without him. Uh, Matthew Fisher, again, appears here on organ. Uh, Jeff Whitehorn on guitar. Matt Pegg on bass. Mark Brzezicki on drums. Keith Reed helping out with lyrics. A couple other guys uh, assisting on various other things. Good album. Really well produced. It's a good sounding album. 
as contemporary Procol Harum goes. You know, honestly, really, The Prodigal Stranger, Novum, and The Wells on Fire are actually all decent, right? They're all decent. They're all very listenable. Um, you know, are they as good as the, the early albums? You know, no, but uh, that was probably never going to be the case, right? All right, next up, number nine, uh, Something Magic from 1977. I like this album. Um, you know, again, they kind of went back to using these kind of like orchestral elements quite a bit on a lot of their albums. And I think uh, this album maybe suffers a little bit because of it. Um, some of the tracks here are, I don't know, there's just a little something kind of lacking for me. However, you know, the worm in the tree, the big, <clears throat> the big epic, which is like what, like uh, 17 minutes long, three parts or multi-part thing. That's pretty cool. Again, very, it's a very symphonic album, kind of orchestral. You know what else you got on here? Uh, you have Strangers in Space, pretty decent. You know, something magic, skating on thin ice. Uh, you know, you got. Um, Trying to remember if the original album had Wizard Man or not, or Backgammon. Those are some of the stuff that are on the CD reissue, by the way. And I love the Repertoire Records um, reissues of these. Just so well done. They sound great. Great packaging, all that kind of stuff. But I, I do like this album. I don't want it to sound like I don't, because I think uh, most of these Procol Harum 70s albums are pretty damn good. Okay. But, uh, you know, here we got, uh, you know, Gary Brooker, of course. You got Mick, Mick Grabham who is basically the replacement for Robin Trower early on on guitar, a very fine guitar player, B.J. Wilson on drums, Chris Copping on bass, Pete Solly on organ and synthesizers. Chris Copping actually was playing organ before moving over to bass, and then uh, Keith Reed uh, supplying lyrics. Okay, So that is number nine. Coming in at number eight, which is actually listed as Procol's ninth, but it's actually their eighth studio album. Would have been it's their ninth uh, release in general because they did have a live album, right? So I actually uh, I like this album. This is uh, for me one of their more harder rock. They have like a couple albums that lean more towards kind of like harder rock stuff, and I think uh, this is one of them. It's got the the excellent Pandora's Box, Fool's Gold, Taking the Time, and the really really good The Unquiet Zone which is a terrific, terrific track. That's got some great uh, Grabham guitar work on it. Uh, also, uh, without a doubt, the Piper's Tune is very cool. Um, Typewriter's Torment, Eight Days a Week. Some really fun stuff on here. It's a good sounding record. Good sounding record. And basically, um, give you the lineup for this album as well. <clears throat> basically, Brooker, Grabham, Copping, who's playing here on uh, organ. Uh, Alan Cartwright on bass, BJ Wilson on drums, and Keith Reed on lyrics. Okay, so Procol's Ninth comes in at eight. Next up, from 1974, Exotic Birds and Fruit. Okay, another really, really strong album, I think. Another great repertoire records digipack reissue. Uh, basically, uh, for the most part, you had the same lineup as, um, as the previous album that I spoke about. Uh, B.J. Cole guests on pedal steel guitar on a track, but here you know you got uh, some really strong, strong, strong songs. Uh, strong as Samson, Beyond the Pale, The Idol is a great, great song with a great vocal from Gary Brooker. You got the Thin End of the Wedge, which I like quite a bit. Uh, Monsieur Armand, very good. New Lamps for Old Butterfly Boys, uh, Fresh Fruit title track, Beyond the Pale. A lot of good stuff on here, and uh, it's got a very, very classy production, which I think all these albums do. That's kind of like the appeal of Procol Harum. It's like um, their their al their songs, their albums just have this kind of lush, kind of dreamy quality. It's artful. It's not too rocking, but just rocking enough. Uh, symphonic in t times, either due to the you know the kind of the, the Hammond organ or the orchestral elements that they would use on a lot of their albums. And you got Gary Brooker's just very English, but very classy and majestic vocals. I think that's the thing. It, Procol Harum is all about the piano and the vocals of Gary Brooker. You know, you got to have that 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 organ, right? Whoever's playing, you got to have that organ simmering in the background. You know, whoever's playing guitar has got to have kind of like a bluesy edge to them. But it's just, it's um, there's just something about. And there's no other band that sounds like these guys. That's, you know, that's the mark of a great band. That's the mark of an original band. It's like they've got a sound that's all their own. It's the Procol Harum sound. Okay. So uh, my number six, we're going to go to 1973's Grand Hotel, which is the first album with Mick Grabham on guitar. 
another one of those kind of big sounding, you know, albums with all the symphonic swells and things like that. Uh, this one was produced by Chris Thomas. Um, most people call this kind of like a concept album, but uh, Keith Reed, the lyricist, would made a lot of uh, claims that it actually is not a concept album, despite what uh, people may think. But uh, The Grand Hotel, big and majestic. Uh, Toujours L'Amour, or however they say that, is a really good song. And again, another one of those more kind of rocking tracks from the band, Pretty Proggy. Uh, TV Caesar, A Souvenir of London. Okay, Bring Home the Bacon. For Licorice John, Fires Which Burnt Brightly, Robert's Box. A lot of really good stuff on here. Uh, another really good kind of just classy album. Basically the same. So it's Brooker, Grabham, Copping, Cartwright, and Wilson with Reed on vocals. All right. So basically, uh, you know, pretty stable lineup for most of the 70s. Uh, with the, you know, <clears throat> with the exception of, you know, Trower leaving and Grabham coming in and Copping taping over, taking over for Matthew Fisher on, uh, on Hammond. A couple other minor, you know, changes here. Pretty... Um, pretty similar lineup all right so here's where it gets kind of dicey for me so the top five i'm a big fan of these albums and i must have if you see my notes there's like scribbles and erases and crossed outs and i, I changed my order on these multiple multiple times um and i you know my opinion on some of these albums constantly is like changing a little bit and this has been forever so i'm gonna go with the order that i put them in as of yes late yesterday and I'm going to kind of stick with this, but this could change at any time. I think most people are not going to be surprised that these five albums are in the top of the echelon here on my list. Uh, it's just a matter of which ones you like better, right? I don't know. So today, at number five, I'm going to go with 1969's A Salty Dog. All right. Uh, another one of those legendary Procol Harum albums that, you know, most people, when you talk about Procol Harum, they talk about this album and the other ones that I'm going to talk about. Uh, you know, The Devil Came From Kansas, uh, Salty Dog, the title track, Juicy John Pink, Wreck of the Hesperus, uh, Crucifixion Lane, Pilgrim's Progress. You know, this is a uh, this is a very kind of uh, late 60s psych Art rock, progressive rock, classic rock, whatever you want to call it. Gary Brooker on vocals and piano and other keyboards. Robin Trower, lead lead guitars, uh, does a little bit of singing on here as well. Matthew Fisher on uh, lead vocals and organ. Dave Knights on bass. B.J. Wilson on drums. A couple other folks helping out. Keith Reed on the lyrics. Okay, uh, Just a really, really strong, strong album. Uh, what's amazing is you do have uh, Robin Trower, who's you know co-writing a bunch of these tunes, uh, which is kind of cool. And here he's still a few years removed from going and starting up his solo career. And while if you know first Robin Trower through his solo work and then you listen to his stuff on Procol Harum, you're probably thinking, wow, we don't hear enough of him in Procol Harum. But when you do, he makes his presence known. Like he comes out in these like kind of cool little bursts on a lot of these songs and a lot of these early albums. And you can just hear the Trower that was to become Trower on his solo stuff, right? Very, very great player. And it's just kind of cool to hear him in this context way before, you know, Bridge of Size, Twice Removed from Yesterday for Earth Below, so on and so forth. But, uh, yeah, cool album, cool cover art, you know. Uh, let's see. Number four, going to go with 1967's Procol Harum. All right, so this is kind of where it all began. All right, depending on uh, what neck of the woods you came from, uh, A Wider Shade of Pale was either on this album or not. In the UK, it was uh, released as a single and not included on the album. In the US, it was included on the album. But a lot of great stuff on here. You got The Incredible Conquistador, a lot of short songs here. Conquistador, Something Follow Me, Mabel, uh, Christmas Camel, very cool tune, Kaleidoscope, Salad Days, Good Captain Clack, uh, Repent While Purges. All right, probably the longest tune, I think, on the album or thereabouts. Uh, she Wandered Through the Garden Fence. This is a very kind of quirky, um, very different from some of the other albums. Like There's, there's like a, a hint of, of psychedelia going on here, which the band had in the beginning of their career. Uh, great vocals, a lot of swirling organ, okay, which was kind of like their trademark. Uh, and, of course, you know, The Wider Shade of Pale is like one of the most beloved albums of all time, right? A uh, really good album. Uh, really good album. Like I said, I the, when I was originally putting these, I've been working on this list for a couple of weeks. When I was originally doing this, uh, the self-titled album actually was up higher. 
And then I, you know, as you start revisiting some of these albums, you think, oh, yeah, it's a great album. But man, I think I kind of like these a little bit better, right? So, and that's kind of what happened here. So my number three, which actually has risen quite a bit in recent days, and I think, you know, if you were to, if we were to do this again in a week, uh, it would probably come even higher because I think it's just a really underrated album from the, that doesn't get talked about enough, and that's uh, Home from 1970. Interesting album cover art. There you go on the back. You go there's... There's Mr. Trower playing a Les Paul, right? You don't usually see uh, Robin playing a Gibson Les Paul, right? He's usually a Fender Strat guy. So uh, this is their fourth album, again from 1970. This features the uh, lineup of Brooker, Trower. Okay, Chris Copping now joins on bass and organ. Okay, B.J. Wilson on drums, Keith Reed on lyrics. So, of course, you got Matthew Fisher has uh, flown the coop. Okay, David Knights has also left the band. So you got uh, Copping doing kind of like double duty here, at least for the uh, for the studio album. Some really great tracks on here. So you got the heavy rock and whiskey train, uh, written by Robin Trower and uh, and uh, Mr. Reed. Really good song, and I think uh, whiskey train probably foreshadows some of the stuff that uh, Robin would do once he left the band, and started a solo career. Uh, you got about to die. You got the dead man's dream. Still there be more. Barnyard Story, which is terrific. The amazing Wailing Stories, again, with uh, more great kind of, um, you know, piano, organ, and stinging lead guitar work. Uh, your Own Choice, to um, Just a really, really strong album that probably doesn't get enough due because, you know, there were no real hits on this album. But I think as one of their, you remember I talked at the beginning about how they had a couple of more rock-oriented albums. This is definitely one of them. As is my next one. 1971's Broken Barricades. Okay. So this would actually be Robin Trower's last appearance with the, or last album with the band for quite a while. All right. To go into a solo career, he would later come back and join the band, obviously, in the 90s, like I mentioned. But uh, this is another one of their more rocking albums. And I think this was the album that uh, Trower really wanted to kind of make his stamp on to get ready for that solo career. And, you know, he's he's starting by, you know, this album, this album, he's starting to become a more uh, focused part of the sound of the band, whereas on the first, like, two albums, not as not as much guitar-oriented. Uh, definitely on these two here, big time. You know, Simple Sister, um, another great rocker to kind of kick off this album got some good riffs from Trower great vocals from Gary Brooker uh, you got the title track Broken Barricade you got uh, Leska Stealth all right Memorial Drive you got the incredible song for a dreamer which is basically Trower's song as a tribute to the recently fallen you know Jimi Hendrix who had just passed away and again that would foreshadow this song would foreshadow his solo career big time you got power failure on here uh, playmate of the mouth poor Muhammad a lot of great songs on here again more of a rock and rock and album uh, another nice repertoire CD reissue they did such a great job on these so that leaves and again I you know like I said I kind of flip-flopped a lot of these uh i'm giving my number one spot to 1968's shine on brightly mainly for my love for the big bombastic 17 minute in hell twas i in tw in in hell twas in i title uh, not title track but epic track which closes out the album that's their big kind of like proggy epic all right it's made up of uh, five different parts it's got classical it's certainly prog it's got loads of psychedelia it's like this big symphonic majestic piece that uh, basically said yeah we're gonna play with the big boys in the prog world even though prog at the time was you know because what are we talking 1968 really no prog yet or okay proto prog i guess but this you know if you're looking back to some of the beginnings of the early progressive rock scene absolutely you got to look at this particular album specifically that long track but otherwise on here you got shine on brightly quite rightly so wish me well rambling on uh, some good quirky kind of artful rock right it's a little psychedelia going on there as well but uh this is definitely one of the first ever kind of proggy moments in history okay so there you have it, uh, ranking the albums of Procol Harum. A lot of good stuff. And again, a really cool catalog that um, all these albums have a lot of really good stuff on there. And very tough to rank.
rank, excuse me, especially the, uh, the, the top ones, because they are just so strong that, uh, like I said, that's, it's like all sorts of different stuff going on in my notes. I rewrote this like two times. Even yesterday, I'm like, no, this one's got to rank higher. This one's got to go higher. But you know what? Really doesn't matter. I think the point is a lot of really strong albums, a lot of really good ones. Where they kind of sit depends on what day of the week it is you're listening to them. A lot of great songs. So number one, Shine On Brightly from 1968. Number two, Broken Barricades from 71. Number three, Home from 1970. Number four, Procol Harum, the self-titled debut from 1967. Number five, A Salty Dog from 1969 number six grand hotel from 73 number seven exotic birds and fruit from 74 number eight procol's ninth from 75 number nine something magic from 77 number 10 the wells on fire from uh what did i say that was 2003 uh number 11 novum from 2017 and last but not least and still pretty decent uh number 12 the prodigal stranger from 1991 there you have it procol harem ranking the albums the studio albums curious to hear how you guys would rank them okay remember there's no right or wrong answer here there's a lot of great albums here that uh, all affect us a little bit differently so and that's the way it should be that's the beauty of music so uh, this is on the web at www.seatranquility.org we're on facebook we're on twitter of course we're here on the mighty youtube all the damn time coming up within moments going to give top 10 songs of the Steve Miller Band. Stay tuned, and later on, we got an interview with uh, Neil Morse. You don't want to miss that. So see you guys real soon. Take care. Bye-bye.